Welcome in the last step of our tutorial series in which we now want to take our UV unwrap banana into a painting application and make a really fast texture map in a stylized way and then bring it back to Houdini and render it. So let's get started. I open here 3D code. We first go here to the file import for pixel painting and I use my banana here as an OBJ. 3D code is a really cheap software in comparison to high-end software like Mari, but it's really capable and so I like it a lot for indie projects and it's able to work with smart materials like for example the Substance Paintable, but it also can import Quixel packages and make smart materials out of that. We have a really powerful sculpt room which can do voxel and surface sculpting, UV room if you want to unwrap objects, retopo and many more features. So it's a really cool application if you are looking for a rounder which you can have as a permanent license. So let's look into this import here. You see I set some things up. I tell now the system okay you can keep the UV which we get. We don't use UDIMS in the moment. 3D code is able to paint over UDIMS and work with UDIMS. Maybe this is a good tutorial series for the future if you want to learn how to work with UDIMS inside of Houdini. So please comment that here under this video. So we deactivate that here and here we have one UV set that's right and we can decide here now how big our texture size should be. Let's take 2K, that's good. And with a click here on OK we see our good banana here. Great. Let's start here in the layers. I name this layer here base and then I take here a fill bucket and let's set everything up. You see I'm working here in all three different modes. So for depth, for color and for glossiness and I think I want to set the roughness of the banana to for example 80% so a little bit shiny but not too much, metalness no. Depth I think it's not important so I deactivate that here because it's only a fill. Then we go here to the colors palette and let's search here for a nice banana color something like that here. Yeah and then let's click here onto the banana and take a look here. I think it's not so bad, maybe a little bit more shiny would be great. If you now want to change your mind and only want to change the roughness, what you can do is you go here, deactivate the color, set the roughness here and then I go here and say let's try 70% and fill again. Mm, let's go crazy, 40%. Yeah, now we have something shiny, not too shiny, but I think it's okay. Where's the fun in a rough model? Okay, now let's make another layer here and we say this is greenish. Now we need a little bit green tips here and some blotches on it. And to grab now my color, I go into the color palette and I use a feature beside all these color choosers here, we can use images. So let's load our image here from our reference images, that here, bring it in here. And now we can use that here as a color picker. Now, for example, I want to have this green here. And yeah, now we are on greenish. I take a brush now and let's take a sharper brush, something like that here. And then we want to draw with color, glossiness. I think the glossiness is the same like the rest, so it's okay. I don't want to change the depth here, so it's also okay, but I want to lower the opacity. Yeah, 15% is, I think, maybe okay. And if you have a curvature map, which I don't baked now, you can go here into the profiles where you want to bake only on the concave or the convex and so on. But this is not a texturing tutorial. So let's work fast here to come back to Houdini. So let's go here around that, come to the other side. And with this low opacity, I can make many strokes here. Let's bring the light to the other side. Okay, then we want also to use that here on the tip. 
Okay. If you like, you can now go around the whole thing. I lower the opacity much, much more. You can have other stroke shapes and make some stripes here on the surface, only to show that it was not ripe when it came into your hands. Okay. When I started to capture this tutorial, I had a banana on my desk, but more and more I should add it brownish tints. So, yeah. So don't take too long for working with that. Okay. So now we have that and maybe we make another thing which we say it's features. And for this I now go into my brushes again. I take here something splotchy like that here. Now we need depth because I want to have a little bit depth later in Houdini. So I increase that a little bit, make smaller and go to the color palette. Grab here a brownish color, something which I like. Yeah, and we can change the saturation a little bit and the lightness. Yeah, maybe something like that. Now, make sure that everything is set. So the depth not too strong, let's say 20%. We can test this in a moment. The opacity, let's make the brown really brown. So 70 or something like that. And now I start, yeah. And now I overlap that and I see here I make some command sets here. I don't like the shininess. So we go here, activate glossiness, and then we bring it up to, yeah, 90% and try it again. Yeah, because I don't want to have it shiny in these areas here, maybe also more. Yeah, let's remove here the whole thing. And now we start here doing first the whole thing upwards. And we close that. We can hold on command to make it negative and so on. Normally you take your tablet and take your time. But I think you get the concept. So let's do the same thing here. Really crude and fast. If you ever lose that, there's a little tip in the camera where you can say here that you always rotate around a pick point. And I can press the F key while I'm over a surface. Then I have a really cool pick point here. And then I can make here also some strokes here. Doesn't look really stylized, I think. <laughs> okay, that's enough for that. Great. Make it a little bit smaller here. Go around. Another round. Have a little bit changes going on. If you now want only to paint with roughness or so, what you can do is I go here in deactivate color and that only the roughness or glossiness is on. You go now to 100% and also the opacity. And then you can select the brush here you like and then you paint over that again to change that. So if you want you can do something like that here but yeah in my case I think that's okay. And if we now want to export the whole model here we only have to go here to file and then to export objects and textures. Here you can export the geometry. That's cool if you import an object, a low poly object into 3D code. Then in the sculpt room you made a high poly object baked out, normal maps and so on. But you still have changed the geometry and so you can output here a mesh if you like. This is also the path where everything is outputted. So we go back into our banana project and inside of that here we go into the text folder, name it banana. And you see it's OBJ because this is the path here where you normally place your geometry. But I don't need that. So I deactivate that here. Then you begin here exporting your maps. What you can do to have it a little bit faster is you can go into this list here and decide what we want. And we want to use the principal shader inside of Houdini. So I go to PBR Metal Roughness. 
So I have it here. Let's see, you have here different styles which you also can define by yourself. We don't use tiles in the moment. Yeah, I have deactivated that before. That's great. And then we get here now the textures. If you want, you can add more. You can change here the color depth and the file format and all this kind of stuff. You can add here curves to it if you want to change something. But yeah, in our case, I think everything is good to go. I click OK. It now takes a while and then we can go back here to Houdini. Great. Let's go out here into the main view. And the first thing we need now is an environment light. So click it. And now we have a light source around the whole thing here. And we can see it if we go here to the high quality lighting. Now we see that our banana is lit in here by a white light. Shift W to remove here the wireframe. And instead of this white light, I want to go to the environments map. If you want, you can now use your own HDRs. If you don't have HDRs in the moment, you can go here into the Houdini file system and they are under pick HDRIs. There are three of them and you can use them here if you like. So let's take the garage here and see that. Great. 